This lecture covers centripetal acceleration. Here's the standard picture of a particle going uniformly around a circle. The circle has radius r. The time that it takes to go around the circle is capital T, the period. By definition, the thing we call the frequency is 1 over the period. And then last time, I showed you that if theta is equal to omega t plus theta naught, then the relationship between these things is omega is 2 pi f. And I also showed that omega is delta theta over delta t. v, which is the length of the vector v, which we say is the speed, v is equal to, well, here's one easy way to calculate it. It's 2 pi r, the total circumference, over the period. Because after all, in one period, you go all the way around. So your speed must be the circumference over the period. This is 2 pi r f. But since 2 pi f is omega, this is also r omega. So that's a, one more important result, that the length of the vector v is just the radius times omega. OK, now we have another thing I want to get. This situation is a situation of constant speed. And yet, the velocity vector is changing. Here, the velocity vector is that way. Here, the velocity vector is that way. If you're over here on this side of the circle, your velocity vector is that way. So as you can see, each of those vectors is different from the preceding one. And we need to calculate what the acceleration is. OK, and how do we calculate the acceleration? Well, we take the velocity at time t, which I've conveniently already drawn here. And we take the velocity a little time later, so the average Velocity, average acceleration between those two times is the final, v at t plus delta t, minus v at t over delta t. And of course, the usual business where if you take the delta t extremely small, that is the instantaneous acceleration. Let's do v at t plus delta t minus v at t. Well, v at t plus delta t, I'm going to copy it over to here. OK, it's about a vector about that long. I'm going to copy it over to there. There I label them. v at t plus delta t is that one, and v at t is that one. Now this angle here, it's not too hard to convince yourself, is the same as that angle there. So that's delta theta. And if delta theta is in radians, and this vector has length v, then this distance, this actual arc distance right here, is v delta theta. We want to compute the difference vector, which is, represents the acceleration. Well, yeah, it's not an arc. It's a straight line. But as you can see, for small delta theta, that is for small delta t, you can see that that arc and that straight line have the same length. And so we are able there to figure out that the length of the difference vector is v delta theta. And, but we're supposed to divide this by delta t, so we have a is equal to v delta theta over delta t. That's how long it is. Now, what direction does it point? Well, the direction that it points, it turns out that as this vector turns this way, it's pointing inwards. Okay, So the direction it points is inwards. And we usually write that. There's a way of writing that. We say, I, want an, I have an outward pointing vector that I call r hat. So the uh, inward pointing vector would be that with a minus sign times r hat. OK, now we're almost there. Delta theta over delta t, one of my results was that delta theta over delta t is omega. So we already have that this is minus v omega 
our hat. Now that's not the most common way to write it. A more common right, way to write it is to use that v, the length of the vector v is itself r omega. So then we have minus r omega times omega, so that makes r omega squared times r hat. So what have we got here? I'm going to box the final result. A is equal to minus r omega squared times r hat. Now, oftentimes you'll just see this written as the magnitude of the vector A, the magnitude of the vector A, which we'll just write as A with no arrow sign over it. So the magnitude of the acceleration, that's the size or the length of that vector. The magnitude of that vector is just r omega squared. And there's other ways of writing it. See, if you want, you see, if I've got this relationship between v, r, and omega, I can trade in any one of these variables for um, the others. And a really common way to do that is to rewrite this as r times omega is v over r. That's squared. So a really common way to write this is v squared over r. So you'll see that as a common expression for the magnitude of the centripetal acceleration. And you'll also see this as a common expression for the magnitude of the centripetal acceleration. And which one you use is uh, dependent upon which one is more convenient in terms of the problems that you're given. Let's do one quick example, okay? So, Let's suppose you're out on a racetrack. You're out on a racetrack and you're in a car that can do, let's say 200 kilometers per hour. You know, I want the units to work out a little bit nicer because I'm gonna have to do a units conversion. So let's make it 180 kilometers an hour. That's still pretty darn fast, okay? And now 180 kilometers per hour is 180,000 meters per hour, but an hour is 3,600 seconds, so that's 180,000 meters over 3,600 seconds. So we see that that is 50 meters per second. Now, here's my little question for you. How sharp a corner can a car go around if it can withstand one G of centripetal acceleration towards the center? And just to make our lives easy, let's take uh, G to equal a nice round 10 meters per second squared. So the question is, at this speed, what would what radius of corner results in 1g of acceleration well we use a is equal to v squared over r we put in that in this the question here that we formulated we're asking how sharp a corner is it when a is g we're given the v and so we learned that r is equal to v squared over g. Okay, now v squared would be 50 meters per second squared, so that's 2500 meters squared per second squared. And g, I said, is 10 meters per second squared. Notice the second squareds cancel. 2500 over 10 is 250. Meters squared is in the numerator, meters in the denominator. So we've just learned that at 180 kilometers per hour, you experience 1g of centripetal, that's towards the center acceleration, if you're managing to make a corner that has a 200, uh, 250 meter radius. That's everything we need to do in night 4.5.